This video will detail the installation of the Daystar Renegade 1.5 inch lift kit. Step 1. Park the vehicle on a hard level surface. Engage the parking brake. Open the hood. Proceed to remove the windshield wipers. Remove the cap covering the nuts retaining the wipers. With a 17mm socket, remove the wiper retaining nuts and washers. Remove the wipers by pulling up and wiggling them a bit. It should not take too much force to remove the wipers. Remove the cowl cover. This is done by using a flat tip screwdriver to pry up the center pins. Then use a panel removal tool to pry up the body of the retainer. On each side of the cowl cover, there is a foam filler panel that is attached to the body with a push pin. With the panel removal tool, pop out the pins. Once the foam filler is removed from each side, remove the cowl cover. Ensure that the e-brake is engaged. Place the wheel chocks behind the rear tires, then lift the front end of the Jeep until the front tires are off the ground. Position the jack stands beneath the frame of the Jeep and rest the vehicle on them. We used a lift for our installation to get better shots for the video. Remove the front tires. A 17mm socket will be needed to remove the factory wheel studs. Starting with the driver's side, disconnect the upper portion of the sway bar link from the strut. Then remove it from the Jeep by disconnecting it from the sway bar. A T40 Torx bit and an 18mm box end wrench are required for this step. Disconnect the tie rod end from the steering knuckle. A 17mm socket will need to be used along with a hammer. Once the retaining nut is loosened, strike the steering knuckle with the hammer until the tie rod end pops loose. Remove the spring clip that is holding the brake line to the strut body. Needle nose pliers are required for this step. Remove the brake line and ABS line from the retainers on the strut body. Remove the bolts that attach the strut to the steering knuckle. This will require a 16mm open end and E16 reverse torx. Separate the lower portion of the strut from the steering knuckle. Then support the steering knuckle assembly so the CV joints are not damaged. Remove the upper strut bolts. You will need an E14 reverse torque socket and an extension. Remove the strut assembly from the Jeep. Apply red Loctite to the threads of the stud extenders and install them into the top of the strut assembly. Once the stud extenders are installed and tightened, place the polyurethane spacer on top of the strut assembly. Reinstall the strut assembly. Install the upper factory bolts. Leave loose at this time. Then reattach the steering knuckles to the strut assembly. Once the strut is installed, tighten the upper bolts to 70 foot-pounds and steering knuckle bolts to 90 foot-pounds. Reattach the brake and ABS lines to the strut assembly. Do not forget to install the spring clip that retains the brake line. Install the supplied sway bar end links. You will need two 18mm open end wrenches for this step. Reinstall the tie rod end and tighten. Make sure all of the bolts that were removed have been tightened and the brake and ABS lines have been reinstalled correctly. Repeat these steps on the front passenger side of the Renegade. 
Locate two of the M21639 round spacers. In the next step, the drive shaft carrier bearing will be lowered. The carrier bearing is located in the center of the vehicle on the rear drive shaft. Loosen the carrier bearing bolts. This will require an E12 reverse torque socket. Remove one of the bolts at a time and replace it with a 10mm bolt and flat washer. Place the spacer between the body and carrier bearing. Once both spacers have been placed, tighten both of the bolts. Locate two of part number M21640 and two of the 8mm bolts and washers. Remove the two bolts that attach the muffler hangers to the unibody. A 13mm socket will be needed. Install the M2164 spacer between the muffler hanger and the heat shield. Then install the new bolt and tighten. Starting with the driver's side, remove the inner fender liner. A Phillips screwdriver and 10mm socket are required. Remove the inner fender from the passenger side of the Jeep. Place the floor jack under the rear differential and provide some slight pressure. Do not lift the vehicle, just enough to hold the crossmember in place. Loosen the four crossmember bolts. An E20 reverse torx will be needed. On the driver's side, remove the two factory bolts, then lower the crossmember enough to install the M21642 spacers. Then install the replacement 14mm bolts and washers. Leave the bolts loose until all four spacers have been installed. Once all four spacers are installed, torque the bolts to 120 foot-pounds. Starting with the driver's side, remove the factory bolt holding the brake, ABS, and e-brake line bracket to the unibody. A 13mm socket will be needed. Install spacer M21641 between the subframe and brake line bracket. Use the supplied 8mm bolt and washer to retain the new assembly and tighten. Repeat the process on the passenger side. Remove the bolt holding the lower control arm to the unibody mounted bracket. An E20 socket and 23mm open end wrench will be needed. Remove the lower control arm from the unibody. An E14 socket will be needed. Install the new lower control arm bracket, torque the bolts to 75 foot-pounds, then reattach the lower control arm and torque the bolt to 110 foot-pounds. Repeat this step on the passenger side of the vehicle. Starting with the driver's side, remove the brake line, ABS line, and e-brake wire from the brackets attached to the body of the strut. This process is the same as the front struts. You will need a pair of needle nose pliers. Remove the e-brake plug from the brake caliper. This can be done by inserting a flat tip screwdriver and gently twisting it until the clip pops and the plug can be pulled. 
Disconnect the sway bar end link from the body of the strut. A T40 Torx and 18mm open end will be needed. Do not remove the sway bar end link, just rotate it out of the way. Starting with the driver's side of the Jeep, remove the two bolts holding the strut to the knuckle. Separate the strut from the knuckle. Remove the three bolts attaching the upper portion of the strut assembly to the Jeep body. Remove the strut assembly from the vehicle. Apply red Loctite to three stud extenders and place them into the three threaded holes. Tighten the stud extenders, then slide the M20507 spacers over the stud extenders. Some light taps from a hammer may be required to set the spacers. Reinstall the strut assembly. Torque the upper bolts to 75 foot-pounds and the lower bolts to 90 foot-pounds. Reattach the sway bar end link. Reattach the brake line, ABS line, and e-brake wires to the strut assembly. Then plug the e-brake wire back into the caliper. On the passenger side, unbolt the charcoal canister. A 10 mm socket will be needed. Attach the upper charcoal canister bracket to the stud using factory hardware. Install the lower charcoal canister relocation bracket. Attach it to the studs using factory hardware. Reinstall the charcoal canister. Use the quarter inch nuts and washer. Once the charcoal canister has been relocated, complete the installation of the passenger side strut assembly. Double check your work to ensure all of the hardware has been tightened, all lines are routed correctly, and that the e-brake has been plugged back in. Reinstall the driver and passenger side inner fender liners. Reinstall the rear tires and wheels, then set the vehicle back on the ground. Torque the rear wheel studs to 90 foot-pounds. This completed the lift kit installation. Stand back and admire your work. At 25 miles, re-torque the wheel studs to 90 foot-pounds. At 500 miles, look over the suspension installation and make sure all of the hardware is tight and all lines are routed correctly.